Good afternoon, everyone. This is Kendall from Aspire Counseling and Wellness Center. And I want to say that I hope everyone is having a scintillating Saturday. Uh, the weather is gorgeous. The sun is out shining. I hope that you've had an opportunity to get out and engage with nature. Um, and on today, what I wanted to do, I've done this before, but I wanted to engage with the kiddos today. And I know that things have been really stressful. Um, some of my friends have, you know, shared that their kids are just really stressed out and missing their friends. You know, I've been reading about, you know, meltdowns and feelings of uncertainty and frustration because our kids' routines have been disrupted. They miss their friends. They miss their teachers. They want to know when the end of this is going to come. I mean, and I think that all, everyone pretty much has those types of questions, but our children are being affected in unique ways um, that bears us to pay great attention to. So I wanted to engage with them today and read one of my most favorite stories um, growing up. And it's Where the Wild Things Are. It's such a good book. And, you know, as we've stated, as I've stated before, reading is an amazing way to help minimize your stress, to kind of take you away from the things that are plaguing you at the moment, you know, give you a different perspective, allow you to live the experience of someone else, engage your imagination and, you know, increase your serotonin levels. Reading does so many good things and especially for our children. So I want to take some time to read. Um, and parents, if you feel a bit nostalgic, please, you know, listen in too. But this is an amazing book. It's an award-winning book as well. And I just, there are some things in the movie, or sorry, the book, where it makes me think of good writing prompts, things for kids to draw about. You know, if you could create your own special place, where would it be? What would it look like? Just another creative way for them to kind of get out the things that are bogging them down on the inside. So not only will I read this book, but I'll also offer just a few uh, strategies to help you tap into your growth mindset as we are continuing our physical distancing while hopefully remaining socially connected. So I'll get started on this amazing book, Where the Wild Things Are. I mean, the illustrations are just top notch. Top notch. No words, but. <laughs> Where the wild things are. I wonder what your monster would look like. The night Max wore his wolf suit and made mischief of one kind. And another. His mother called him wild thing. And Max said, I'll eat you up. <laughs> so he was sent to bed without anything to eat. Okay, Max. <laughs> Don't want to starve. That very night in Max's room, a forest grew. and grew and grew until his ceiling hung with vines and the walls became the world all around. I wonder what place would grow for you. My place would be Bali, Indonesia. <laughs> and an ocean tumbled by with a private boat for Max and he sailed off through night and day. And in and out of weeks, and almost over a year, to where the wild things are. And when he came to the place where the wild things are, they roared their terrible, their terrible roars and gnashed their terrible teeth and rolled their terrible eyes 
and show their terrible claws. I mean, are they that terrible? Till Max said, be still and tame them with the magic trick of staring into all their yellow eyes without blinking once. And they were frightened and called him the most wild thing of all. So those things that we think are scary may not be that scary if we stand up to them, right? And made him king of all the wild things. And now, cried Max, let the wild rumpus start. They're about to have a party. <laughs> Dancing in the moonlight. One wild rumpus. How would your party go? Now stop, Max said, and sent the wild things off to bed without their supper. And Max, the king of all wild things, was lonely and wanted to be where someone loved him best of all. Then all around, from far away across the world, he smelled good things to eat. So he gave up being a king of where the wild things are. I wonder who that someone that loved him best of all was that he missed. Who would that person be for you? The someone that you love best of all. But the wild things cried, oh, please don't go. We'll eat you up. We love you so. And Max said, no. The wild things roared their terrible t roars and gnashed their terrible teeth and rolled their terrible eyes and showed their terrible claws. But Max stepped into his private boat and waved goodbye. He was ready to go. And sailed back over a year and in and out of weeks and through a day. Max is like, I miss my mom. <laughs> and into the night of his very own room, where he found his supper waiting for him. And it was still hot. That is the book where the wild things are. It's such a good book. And I just you know, want you to think about, you know, like I said earlier, what would be your place if you had to imagine or create a place that you could go for a respite, take a break? Where would that place be? What would it look like? Who would be there? What would you do? And who would be the people that you would bring with you, like your team of comfort people, right? So I want to give you three tips that are going to hopefully help you to tap into your growth mindset as we continue to physical distance. And one of them would be to focus on the good. We are living through a very difficult time, but there's always a lesson to be learned in whatever circumstance that we find ourselves in. So if you can take some time to identify what are the good things about having to be physically distant, safe at home that you are noticing on a daily basis. What I, I posted something yesterday, it was called, what are the silver lining lessons that you're having to learn through this um, time of forced slowdown? Another one would be to remember that frustration is a normal part of the process. Being frustrated, being upset, you know, feeling a little bit of anxiety, all these feelings are normal. So no, you're not weird or there's nothing wrong with you. If you're noticing that you have a surge of these negative type of emotions, it's just to recognize when it happens, to accept that it's happening and find a positive way of coping with the frustration that you may feel. And if you notice that it's happening more persistently, that it's beginning to get more intense, you may want to reach out to someone, a licensed professional, to help you uh, manage your symptoms and 
create a plan of positive coping. And lastly, I want you to recognize that the journey that we're on is the biggest lesson and not necessarily the end result. When it comes to COVID-19, yes, we want to know when, when is the end going to come. But when we talk about our own process of healing and learning through the situation, it's the journey that the learning is going to come from. What are we learning about ourselves? What are we noticing? How are we growing through this epidemic that we're all collectively experiencing? Are our relationships improving? Um, are we caring for ourselves? Are we being kind to ourselves? So knowing that each day, take it day by day, and that the process is going to definitely be more important than the final destination. So I thank you again for joining me on this story time Saturday. I will do more of these. I would love for you to message me with any recommendations that you may have. Um, I love reading books to children. I used to be an English teacher and we would love, like that would literally be my favorite, one of my favorite parts of teaching <laughs> is when I get to read to them because they just fall back into that, you know, space of I'm a kid again. Um, so this is something that I enjoy. And we can always have a mental health spin, a wellness spin to anything that we read. Um, so if you have any suggestions, please email me or message me on Facebook what you would recommend that I read. I'll, I'll definitely um, go to Amazon or Bookshop to find some more books. And you can reach me on my Facebook page. You can find me on Instagram at Aspire Counseling Well. You can find me on Twitter at AspireCWC, or you can go check me out on my website at AspireCounselingWell.com. I'm Kendall Tyson, and thank you for spending some time with me on this amazing Saturday, and I hope that you all stay well, stay healthy, and prioritize your mental health.